What's up, y'all? Forrest here. Today is 4th of July, so happy Independence Day to my fellow Americans. As you can see, this isn't my typical setup, and no, this isn't the new house that I mentioned in last video. It's just off the beach here in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and this is where we'll be spending the next day or two. But yesterday on a community post, I asked y'all to ask any questions. This is a 100K Q&A video for those of you who don't know. We just hit 100,000 subscribers recently. Appreciate it, I really do. Last night I asked y'all to leave any questions in a community post for me for this 100K Q&A video, so let's go through some of those. What tips will you give me and the people who want to start a career as a programmer and is that a good choice? A lot of the tips that I have to give, I've made videos about, so just check out some of those videos on my channel. But to give a brief answer, Make sure that it's something that you want to do. Don't just say, oh, I can make a lot of money doing that and do it because you won't last long. I mean, you can try to do it, but if you realize you don't really like it that much, then you're not gonna last very long. You're not gonna enjoy what you do every single day. Plus you need to think about the lifestyle that you have. You're gonna be sitting at a desk for six to eight hours every single day. Is that something that you're open to? To me, those are the few most important things to take into consideration, because you gotta make sure that you want to do the work, otherwise, what does it matter? I can give you all the programming tips in the world if you don't care. Do you find it hard to focus on programming for a long period of time? What ways do you combat this? I do find it hard to focus on programming for a long time, depending on the particular problem. Sometimes I'll dive into a problem, and I'm just working it through, and the next thing I know it's like, two, three hours later, but more often than not, I have to do, I think it's called the Pomodoro technique or however you pronounce it, where you work for a set amount of time, you take a break for a set amount of time. So I like to go on my walks. If you've seen any of uh, some of my videos, like the day in the life videos, you see that. So I'll work for maybe an hour, maybe 45 minutes, something along those lines, depending on the day and depending on the task. And then I'll take a five minute break and go, grab some water or go grab some snacks or I'll take even longer, maybe like 15 to 20 minute break and I'll take a lap or two around the building. I try not to think about the problem when I'm on those breaks. I know other people actually try to think about the problem and whatnot, but I try to just not think about anything that has to do with work. Just go on my walk, daydream if you will, just look around, whatever. And then I'll come back and I'll get back into it. How do you get maintained in shape and programming? Do you read books? Do you code some things or how? Well, for me now, of course, you know, I, I, that's what I do every single day. And I think that's a good way to do it is make sure you do work every single day. It doesn't have to be writing actual code. It can be trying to fix a bug. I actually have a partnership with this company that I haven't really told y'all about called dailycodingproblem.com slash forest. That's the URL that you would want to use if you want to support me. It's completely free and it sends you a coding problem every single day. Hence the term, uh, the name of it, daily coding problem. It's pretty cool. It sends you an email every single day with a new coding problem for you to do. And then if you want the solutions, that's where uh, their upsell is. That's where you can spend $9 per month or $8 per month if you use my promo code, Forrest, it's just my name. And then they'll send you the solutions along with those coding problems. So check that out. Like I said, link in the top of the description. What's your advice for a 15 year old who's trying to be a gameplay programmer? So uh, what does that mean? Like a game developer? I would say take a look at the game engines, make your job, especially breaking into it as easy as possible. A lot of these games that are made, they're made on top of a game engine. Now, Fortnite, the biggest game that is out right now, is built on top of Unreal Engine. Now, Epic Games created the Unreal Engine and they created Fortnite on top of that, and I'm sure they did more than just use the Unreal Engine, but use like Unity Engine or the Unreal Engine or any of these other game development engines and start to learn that instead of trying to figure out how to make your own graphics, trying to do all the physics that is behind game development make your job as easy as possible. How does having an online presence like YouTube affect you when seeking and maintaining jobs in the comp sci field? So for me, I've had the same job for over a year. I got it right after I graduated from college last May. And of course I was trying to secure this job for that whole entire spring semester. So from anywhere between January and May, I went from January 13th, I had 4,000 subscribers. And then in April, April 3rd, I had 10,000, and then June 15th, I had 18,000. So, I mean, if they if they searched my name on Google, I think I would have come up, but it's not like, a, not like now where I have 100,000 subscribers, which is a, quite a bit more than 10,000 subscribers at the time. So, I don't think it helped or didn't help. I didn't say anything about my YouTube channel. I kind of uh, always kept those two things separate. Now, of course, they've merged into one, but I do think that if I wanted to use my YouTube channel, then maybe it would help considering it is in the software development realm. If I was just making random videos about woodworking, I don't think that would help me with, uh, with, with getting a software development job, you see. So since it's related, maybe it would help, but 
I haven't had experience with that. From your perspective, what are the big differences someone with a CS, CS bachelor's or master's to someone that went to a boot camp? I'm a chemical engineering major and I don't enjoy my career at all and I've always enjoyed coding, VBA. My, I'm working towards the prereqs to get into grad school for MS and software engineering. Now, I don't know about boot camp, but something I've been told, is one particular person who owned this uh, software development company, their best programmers were strictly self-taught. And I say strictly self-taught because it doesn't matter if you're a boot camp or if you're a computer science major or software engineering major, you're still gonna be teaching yourself a lot of things. I don't know if you've seen uh, Joshua Fluke's most, one of the most recent videos about tutorial hell. He kind of says the same thing that you're always gonna be self-taught as a programmer because you're not just gonna be able to go to class and then teach you everything. You gotta do, you gotta put in the work. Like in my last video, I talked about how you go to class maybe an hour a day but for that hour a day, you're working on five, six, eight hours a day for homework for that class. All that stuff is you teaching yourself, maybe asking your professor a few questions in office hours or an email, but you're, you're self-taught. But I digress. <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is the fact that purely self-taught people at this particular company that I was talking about tend to be better programmers than those who have a computer science degree. Having a bachelor's or master's in computer science will open a lot more doors for you, but I always personally believe that your portfolio is going to be something that, that knocks down the door as well because it shows that you can actually do the work. And then the interview process will expose you if you can't actually do the work as well, and it's just you knowing your stuff is going to be a lot better in the long term than having a piece of paper, a sheepskin that says, yeah, I graduated from computer science. In most cases. Take, take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm, I'm only one person. Any advice for an aspiring YouTuber who wants to build a brand around software engineering? Just start uploading videos about your experiences in software engineering. What software do you use to screen record? This is from the same person. I use OBS. What's your snap? Don't have one. I do have an Instagram and a Twitter that I really don't use that much, but they're always linked in the description below. How important was your GPA in, in your job search? It wasn't at all. It wasn't important whatsoever in my job search, in any of my internships or co-ops throughout school, anything in the computer science field, my GPA didn't matter. It wasn't good enough, in my opinion, to list on my resume, so I didn't, and no one ever asked me about it. Any updates on the new business you're working on? How is it going so far? So with that, I think I mentioned it a couple videos ago that, it, of course, it keeps getting pushed back. That's just my nature to be late with things, but uh, sometime in August, hopefully early August, but I'm working with a lot of different people trying to get things together, so it's not strictly on me in terms of the timeline it's on me as well as a few other entities if you will but other than that it's going well it's just you know it takes a little bit of time for those of you who are wondering who know about it or maybe even don't know about it uh, it has really nothing to do with programming I wanted to do something that was a little bit different but in a way in a way it is still related to it but uh <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll announce more about it once everything is, maybe in a couple weeks, how about that? When did you start coding or getting interested in technology? I, I, in all honesty, I didn't really start coding until I was 19 years old. For a computer science student who just finished the first year, what would be the best way to make money from the field? So, like, like right now, I would say get an internship. There are some pretty well-paying internships, and I'll just be straight up about it, um, how much I made from, uh, from my co-op at Norfolk Southern because it's public record. So I was there for two semesters, once technically as a junior in college and one as a senior in college. And as a junior, I got paid $3,000 per month. As a senior, I made $3,300 per month. And if I'm not mistaken, as a sophomore, you would make $2,700 per month. And if they had the option for a freshman to be some type of co-op intern there, I'm sure that would be $2,400 per month. $300 for, for every year increase. Sure, there are other options, but that's where you get a little bit more creative. In my opinion, an internship that pays, because as a computer science student, you should be getting paid internships. I think that is the best for short-term money as well as long-term money, because the more internships you get throughout school, the more money you make throughout school, the more experience you gain throughout school in preparation for your full-time job once you graduate. And those are all the questions for today. If you left a question I didn't get around to it, I apologize. There were quite a bit and I'm trying to make sure this video gets consolidated and whatnot today. Got to go down to the beach soon. This morning I actually had to rescue a boat from the bay, take it back to their dock, and then come back on over. So it's a little bit delayed, but I don't mind helping somebody out especially if they're stranded in the middle of the bay. But I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you aren't already. Until next time, guys, have a good one. Peace.